Nestled within the icy embrace of the Arctic Ocean lies Svalbard, a remote archipelago that defies conventional notions of living. Here, amidst towering glaciers, polar bears, and the dancing auroras of the Northern Lights, a unique community thrives in one of the world's most extreme environments. But what draws people to this icy paradise, and how do they navigate its rugged terrain? This remote wilderness of icy fjords, glaciers, and frozen tundra is a place for true adventurers, but there are significant challenges. Summer brings continuous sunlight, while winter is dark with frequent snowstorms and avalanches. Governed under the Svalbard Treaty, the islands enjoy commercial rights extended to 46 signatory nations. Norway appoints a governor who acts as chief of police. Svalbard is a visa-free zone, but self-sufficiency is key due to limited job opportunities, and living here doesn't count towards residents in Norway. It's good to understand Svalbard's history, which defines much of everyday life today. Although whaling and sealing are distant memories, and coal mining has now all but ceased, all the previous industries have left their mark on Svalbard. Today, the archipelago's economy is driven by a combination of science, research, and tourism. Most people moving to Svalbard will fall into one of these two categories. As the biggest settlement on the archipelago, Longyearbyen is where the majority of Svalbard's residents live, work, and play. Approximately 2,000 people live in the town, although the population fluctuates because of the large student population and the seasonal nature of tourism. Longyearbyen Lokal Steyr Community Council operates the school, kindergarten, cultural center, cinema, sports hall, gallery, library, youth club, fire service, and energy company. It is also responsible for roads, water, waste management, sewerage, and town planning. The council is elected every four years, Technically, it's easy to move to Svalbard. The archipelago is an entirely visa-free zone and you do not need a residence permit to live there. But the reality is quite different. Employment opportunities in Longyearbyen are limited, especially since most mining activities were recently closed. Major employers include the governor's office, the community council, the university center in Svalbard, the school, and of course, the tourism industry. As a general rule, income tax on Svalbard is much lower than on the Norwegian mainland. It's just 8% for the majority of income, although very high earners pay more. However, this tax saving is offset by a much higher cost of living. The school in Svalbard teaches lessons in English and Norwegian through to upper secondary level. There is also a kindergarten for children aged one to five. The Community Council's Child and Family Welfare Service supports and assists children, young people, and families with a difficult time at home. Longyear Bien has a hospital staffed by professionals, including GPs, nurses, a surgeon, dentists, physiotherapists, and more. Stays are free for residents of the Nordic countries and for anyone covered by the Norwegian National Insurance Scheme. Formerly a mining town, Longyearbyen primarily housed mine workers and those providing services to them. Today, the majority of homes are owned by the mining company, the local government for their employees, or the university. Very little private accommodation exists in Svalbard. What little there is gets rented quickly, often at eye-waveringly high rates. When visitors arrive, they often find themselves having to share rooms or sleep in storage rooms for weeks until accommodation becomes available. For such a small, remote community, a surprising amount of activity is happening in Svalbard, much of it managed by the community council. One of the most iconic activities in Svalbard is dog sledding, a tradition that dates back centuries in the region. Visitors have the opportunity to embark on exhilarating sledding expeditions across the pristine snowfields. Guided by expert mushers and teams of eager huskies, Svalbard is home to one of the world's densest populations of polar bears, making it a prime destination for wildlife enthusiasts. Polar bear safaris offer the rare opportunity to observe these majestic creatures in their natural habitat, from the safety of specially designed vehicles or guided excursions. For those seeking a more immersive experience, Arctic kayaking offers a unique perspective on Svalbard's rugged coastline and pristine fjords. Paddling through icy waters, surrounded by towering mountains and sparkling glaciers, allows for an intimate encounter with the Arctic environment and its resident wildlife, from seals and seabirds to the occasional whale sighting. Many shops in Longyearbyen cater to tourists. Svalbard Butiken, part of the Coop chain, 
is one for the locals. Groceries, kitchen equipment, fresh foods, cosmetics, and alcohol are all available, and the store is open daily. As with mainland Norway, the alcohol store has shorter hours and is closed on Sundays. Groceries are more expensive than on the mainland, with fresh foods particularly pricey. Although alcohol is sold duty-free, residents of Svalbard are subject to a quota system that limits the amount of alcohol they can buy within any given month. Despite this, local politicians are concerned about the amount of alcohol consumed. The biggest challenge anyone living on Svalbard faces is adjusting to the harsh climate. The Arctic climate of Svalbard is characterized by frigid temperatures, fierce winds, and heavy snowfall, creating conditions that can be unforgiving for even the most seasoned residents. Winter temperatures frequently plummet well below freezing, with temperatures as low as minus 40 Celsius not uncommon. Blizzards and storms can strike with little warning, disrupting transportation, communication, and daily life. In such extreme conditions, even routine tasks like grocery shopping or commuting to work can become arduous challenges. As a resident of Svalbard, you are merely a guest of the island's true citizens, polar bears. Although they do not commonly roam the streets of Longyearbyen, they do come close and many residents leave their doors unlocked to allow anyone to quickly get to safety. Unless you are visiting as part of an organized tour, it is a requirement to carry a firearm and to know how to use it whenever leaving Longyearbyen. That's quite different from the rest of Norway. Due to its remote location and harsh environment, Svalbard faces significant challenges in terms of access to resources. Fresh water, for example, is a precious commodity, with much of it sourced from melting glaciers or transported from the mainland. Similarly, food supplies are limited and expensive, often requiring careful planning and rationing to ensure sufficient provisions during periods of bad weather or transportation disruptions. While efforts are underway to promote sustainability and self-sufficiency, the reality of life in Svalbard means making do with less and learning to adapt to scarcity. Life in Svalbard is a testament to the human spirit's resilience in the face of formidable challenges. From its remote location's isolation to the harsh realities of its Arctic climate, Svalbard demands strength, resourcefulness, and a deep respect for the natural world. Yet, despite the many obstacles, the people of Svalbard persevere, forging a unique way of life defined by resilience, solidarity, and an unwavering commitment to preserving the fragile beauty of the Arctic wilderness. Make sure to let us know your thoughts and don't forget to like today's video. Thanks for watching.